Hey, my name is Jasper and welcome to Salesoft Bootcamp. So what I'm going to show you right now is how can you do ABM account based selling and marketing as we call it. And I'm going to show you a few ways you can do it and we're going to start right now. So ABM is all about targeting companies or accounts as we call it in sales that could be a beneficial customer for you. And it's very important to notice you are selling to a person, not just a company. But when you start having data trends, you learn more about your ideal customer profile, your ICP. So my example is going to take place at Sales Navigator. So we're going to go over a couple of examples. The first one would be technology-based prospecting. So if you're a technology company, you might want to go in and say, OK, what companies are using Marketo as an example? So basically, I'm going to take Tracker.io, they're the biggest company tracking what companies are using which technology. And I can make an export or add more keywords to understand where they're from. I can export them to a CSV file. Once I get a CSV file, I can take about 50 companies at a time, entering Sales Hub's Boolean sheet here. You can cut, copy paste, you can just copy paste down the row, and it's going to make what we call a Boolean search. So what we're going to take here is, we are going to copy the values, so we just copy it here. And we go back into Sales Navigator, and then we're going to say Companies. So now we're going by a set of company names. So basically I could just go by Leeds, current company, and type them in here. So now I'm typing in all these companies that I mentioned here, and it will show the employees of those companies that are using, in this example, let's say Marketo. Now, once I do that, the fun begins. So now we have to figure out from each account who we're targeting. Those are your personas. Again, personas are extremely important. So what I tend to tell our customers are that three personas that are the decision maker, he's in the end deciding the sale. If you sell into one to 10 person companies, it's typically the founder or CEO. Um, it's very simple. If you're selling to mid market companies with plus 100 employees or more, that's where you got to think about the different job titles and they will be different from business to business. So one example for us, we typically look at the decision maker, somebody who is VP of sales, the director of sales or SDR manager for sales up. And then we're looking at who benefits from us. That's our influencer. So that could be somebody who is going to use our product every day and will push it forward and say, Hey, we need sales hub. So we need to identify those. And then it could be your champions as well. They're similar to influencers, but it can be an outsider that see the value in getting a new product, they can push it to an influencer that push it forward, or push it directly to your decision maker. So once we've done that, we can narrow those down by job title. So you can either go by job titles or functions. Keep in mind functions is not always accurate, but they are a good starting point. Then we go seniority level. So let's talk about decision makers here. So we go VP, director, uh, manager is often not. There will be more champions uh, or influencers. CXO and then missing the rate. So in these, how many companies did we take? One, two. So we have 14 companies here. So they were quite big. So let's see those 14 companies using Marketo as an example, we're down to 430 uh, potential decision makers because they're larger companies. So my benefit is I need to figure out who should I reach out to. So this is the director of sales for large enterprise. So he's running the enterprise sales stack. While he runs enterprise sales at Drift, as an example, here, Josh, and so on and so forth. So at this point, I have a couple of options. I can create a campaign tailored to them talk about Marketo and that's typical of what I would do. So I will either reach out uh, through what I call an icebreaker, I prefer that. And I'm going to show you another example here. So if we go down to what we call spotlights, these are perfect for icebreakers and that's where you get through. So when I look at people who posted the last 30 days on LinkedIn, why do you want to do that? I can give you an example right now. So if you go back to Sales Hub, I have a list of automations. So my automations right here, I have one called Icebreaker Miami. Now I'm just taking a hypothetical up, uh, automation right here. But the point is, in the LinkedIn request, what I've done is, I'm taking, hey, first name, Icebreaker. Uh, you can also just say, hey, 
hey John, noticed you guys are using Marketo, just want to understand how much you're getting out of it, and so on and so forth. Now in this case, Marketo is the market who's using it, so maybe the salespeople doesn't care so much, but if we integrate Marketo, marketing pushes forward, sales can push us forward, so it gives us a different edge on selling to them. So when we talk about the icebreaker, that's where we are looking at the data. And the reason we do that is we set up a campaign. Basically, if we cannot find an email, they get a LinkedIn message two after we connect with them. And if we do find an email, they're gonna get an email, LinkedIn message, email, as an example. So if we go back to, um, to LinkedIn here, so I'll give you an example. I'm gonna open a couple of these guys, or girls if there are some between this list, and I'm gonna open them in a new window. You might wonder why I do that, but I'm gonna show you something very, very important right now. So the reason why I added the 30 day spotlight who posted the last 30 days is LinkedIn is not always accurate, so you gotta be aware of that, but it's because I'm after this one. So when I'm going to reach out to Damon, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to use his social interactions to talk about him. So for example, uh, talk about this. I'm just going to copy paste here. So this is a podcast, right? So all I'm going to do to say to Damon is, uh, "Hey, Damon, will come?" And then I mention this. Saw Sanders went holds a down some some trembling in the last uh, podcast. Thanks for sharing these nuggets or our insights, whatever it is you want to say, nuggets, you can spell it right. So now this is coming out perfect for Damon, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit him into Icebreaker Miami. And now we're going to reach out to him. He is, however, in Australia, uh, but I just took a random uh, example here. Of course, you're going to be targeted, but this is how I'm going to have Damon open this message. He's going to go like, hey, I want to connect with Jasper because he knows what he's doing. He took the time to read about me. And then I process the next person. You see, it goes pretty fast. So I go to the next person. And then I, again, I'm just going to do the following. Amazing time with Slack Latin team in New York, New York this week. Uh, so I'm going to say that. Looked like you had a great time with, you, with the Slack team in New York. I mean, super easy, right? So again, it's so simple to break the ice and get through to a prospect. And then after you build a connection, you build a relationship. And once that is established, well, now you can start coming into a conversation with share a white paper, you share something that they really, really care about, and then you can set a meeting. It's really, really simple. So I hope that makes sense to you. But LinkedIn, there are other functions I'm going to show you. So this was based on if they're using a particular technology. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to clear out my search here. So I'm going to go back to regular sales navigator. And again, this session is about account based selling. So what we're going to talk about is how can you apply that to your business. So let's go account filters. So LinkedIn has different filters. There can be companies hiring right now. So companies hiring on LinkedIn right now. They don't tell you the job title, you cannot uh, spot that down. You also look at what are the recent activities that uh, senior leadership changed, as an example. So you use those as a parameter when you start diving in. So I can go in and say company headcount. So I can say I want 51 to 500 employees. But since I'm selling to the sales department, I also want to look at the sales department having a minimum of five people but not more than, let's say, 100. And then I can add that. I can also say, I want companies with a sales department that grew over 10%, but maximum 200%. And LinkedIn doesn't tell us the period, but now I'm looking at companies, 51 to 500 employees globally. I didn't add a location, you can do that. That would be smart in industry. You also say how many are following them. LinkedIn's technology is not as good as tech trackers. That's why I recommend to go to tech tracker way because they're very limited. They don't track as many companies. There's not the speciality, but it's also an option. But I recommend to use tech tracker that I own. So once I find the right companies and I add all the fields in it, 
I can select the companies I can either save them to a list or just hit view current employees. So once I do that, LinkedIn is going to make a search on these 25 companies here. And now I can apply the same filters, finding the right people within the companies who might have changed job in the last 90 days. They want to come in and make change, who was mentioned in the news, posted on LinkedIn and so on and so forth. And now I'm down to 3,500 people within these companies. Then I can add all the filters that you need. And now I start getting a picture of who I'm going to reach out to. I'm going to use my icebreaker to break the ice. I'm going to do 20 of those a day and I'm going to set five demos every day. That's the process to an ABM. You should really focus about. And a rule of thumb, if it's a bigger company you break into, Makedo, uh, they've been a client of mine in Europe. And when they were breaking into, for example, Louis Vuitton, Hennessy, LVMH companies, uh, their portfolio companies, I know that for a fact because I'm sitting in a meeting with them on the prospecting, they're breaking through to 30 to 40 people. Uh, so there are different ways depending on the reach you want to do. But typically, for a bigger or mid-sized company, you're probably going to target 5 to 10 people. So you're going to run through one to one and find those 5 to 10 people within the account. And you might want to save them to a lead list before you do it. So you save them, open the lead list. Um, the way you then, if you want to run that lead list once you save them, and the way you save them is just here, pick your lead list. I'm going to show you right now. So the way you use the Icebreaker plugin with saved lead list is again super, super simple. So you're going to open up the regular LinkedIn right here. I'm just going to hit lead list. Find that lead list you created. And then you're going to open those people. You can also do it from the lead list and then open the profile. You can do it either way. Uh, then once you're on the profile, you can click the plugin. You can add the icebreaker. Sorry, I'm clicking too many times here. You add the icebreaker, add them to the automation. You also take a search like this if you don't want to use icebreakers. And you will see the loading right here. So you go to the bottom and it tells you if the duplicates so is another really, really good feature from Sales Hub. Then you select the automation you want to add them to and you just hit add right here. You can add duplicates because they already exist. But if I want to hit Martin and Charles, I just hit add and then they get moved into this 100% automation I'm running. So that's another example um, how you do ABM. So what you need to do now is to start your homework, test, for example, if you have some type of technology integration, ideal customer profile based on that, go with the tech tracker, find those companies that are using that, and then run in the Boolean search. If you want to find the spreadsheet, you head over to learn.salesup.ai and you go find the LinkedIn Boolean course and it's going to show you right there. So this is how simple it is. Then you copy paste them in and you run the Boolean search directly on LinkedIn as I showed earlier in this video. Remember to build a campaign where you are using the icebreaker and the icebreakers also work in emails. So I recommend because they might not see your connection request. So in your email templates, so this one called email template icebreaker JQ. So I go into templates. I'm going to show you how I set that up. Again, it's really, really straightforward. So icebreaker JQ, I'm going to find this template it's sitting right here. So I put in hey first name icebreaker and then I want to reach out to connect as a feel, feel deeply inspired by your success. You can change this depending on who you're reaching out to. This was meant to founders. So they relate more to that while maybe a VP of sales doesn't care. So, or if they haven't been long in the job, they just change. You can say how fast you, you moved up your ranks or how fast you moved the career. You can, you can test the wording, but it has to be about emotional intelligence. Because in the end of the day, you want to talk to that client and you want them to respond to you. So you can break that ice and you're going to communicate to them in a way that they feel like you are worthy of their time. So that's what I had to show you today. Thank you for watching. And let's start closing more deals using icebreakers. Bye-bye.